black. Some concentration camp thing, you know, C Lo. Uh, started off with C Lo, Young Bleed, mid to late nineties. And then, you know, we had like another version of the camp with me, Loke, and Boosie after that. Then, of course, when No Limit moved to BR, Loke hooked up with Pete. You know, we, I mean, we used to work with all of them. They all used to, you know. So, how'd they come about? Pete, Pete had heard about him? Uh... Pete met Loke at a, at a record store in BR called Treasure Chest. I think, like, they bumped into each other. And uh, Loke did a song on Down South Hustlers. And then... He was on the TRU album, the one with the three uh, ski masks. Mm -hmm. He was on the Bowdy soundtrack, the the how you do that there. Uh, you know, that was Bleed's song. And like, you know, song came out, that bitch went crazy. They ended up doing the remix, the one that was on the Bowdy soundtrack too. It's wicked when I kick it, wicked, she don't hear me though. When I hit the door, just hit the flow, time to go. So after that, Bleed ended up signing with Priority. And Loke ended up signing a labor deal with Priority. And then, you know, Bleed album came out. It had the No Limit Tank on it and shit. Like, people, you know, everybody considered it as a No Limit album. You know what I'm saying? But it kind of was a No Limit album, but it kind of wasn't. You know what I'm saying? It was more so like they branded it as a No Limit album. 98, 99, we got a partner named Frog. He told Loke about this kid. Like, man, you got to come hit this kid. Cross the track, you know, he he dope, so he took Loke over there to hear boosting. So pray for me, how I'm gonna learn when this ghetto life was gave to me. Why I do right when hollow tips on the chase for me? Oh. How many times? That's when Boosie came into the picture. And shit, the rest was his. How old was Boosie about that time? Man, he had to be like maybe 13 or 14, probably. For real? Yeah, yeah. He was speaking grown man shit? Man, the most vivid as shit. You know what I'm saying? That's what, that's what. Like, 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 I don't, you, 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 you familiar with like that early Boosie shit? You, you, so you know, so you know how his voice sound. He sound like a little, little bitty kid. You know what I'm saying? But, but the shit he was talking about was real, like grown man shit. It was just, you know, he, did, you know, like a little kid talking about my mama sick with thyroid drama and my daddy on dope. You know, it was just real hood shit, you know what I'm saying? But 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 the nigga voice was just so little. It's like that talent. You fuck with me, I'm going get that chopper. I might go get Big Papa, and he go hard stop ya. What'd you think about him when you first saw him? Shit, I thought he was, I thought he was wrong. Like, it, it's like, he, he was like one of them dudes that you know when you heard it, like, nah, this 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 shit here special, you know what I'm saying? So shit, we, we took off. We dropped uh, Boosted first album, Youngest of the Camp, but yeah. That year, Loke ended up going back to jail. You know what I'm saying? So, what type of shit would he be going to jail for? Actually, I mean, what well, he was on, uh, he was on paper. Big dog. Yo, some people been coming through asking questions about you, man. Detectives? Yeah. That's what's up. Loke, Loke certified in the street. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, he 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 Southside legend. You know what I'm saying? Like. You know, I don't want to get into, you know, right, right, right. shit, but yeah, he, you know, er, 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 everybody who know Loke, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, he, 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 you know Say, what I'm bro, saying? at that age, you said about 13, 14, 15, with Boosie, right? Mm -hmm. Could you look at him and see that he was troubled? He, I knew he was growing up in South Baton Rouge, so, you know what I'm saying? Like, this the environment he in. So, when we started fucking with him, you know, Loke told his mama, like, I'm gonna take care of him, you know what I'm saying? You know, and his mama, he gave his, his mama his word, like, I'm gonna make sure, you know, try to keep him out of trouble, try to make sure he keep going to school, make sure he do everything he's supposed to do. You know what I'm saying? So, and in, 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 in Loke's hands, did, did Loke succeed with that? Keeping him out of trouble? Man? Kinda, but he didn't really have the time because, you know, right when, right when the shit started really jumping, that's when Loke got locked up, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, once Loke knew he was gonna have to back up the time, he was gonna have to back up. You know, Loke was just in a in a position where he was like, man, I ain't gonna hold y'all back, y'all, whatever y'all, you know, however y'all can move, shit, go ahead and do it, you know what I'm saying? And then that's when Trill, that's when he hooked up with Trill. Nice camera, action, pose. I know I'm looking good for these hoes, I'm like, people Matter of fact, I'm the one who let Mel hear Boosie because I used to let him hear the shit that we was doing, you know what I'm saying, when we was doing it. So, um... But who, who was Turk and Mel at that time? How would you explain their character? I mean, Turk, like, Turk and Mel was, you know, they OGs. They, like, low in them age. So, them niggas was, you know, like, Turk from Zion City, you know, and Turk had, like, a, a reputation, you know what I'm saying, like... You know, like they, I mean, they was, they was street niggas and they was, you know, they was hustlers, you know what I'm saying? 
So yeah, they they was official dudes where you know where they was at too. You know what I'm saying? I'm a motherfucking dog. I'm a dog. In the club, I make the bitches get out like bow, bow, bow. Do you remember being around Lil Fat and what he was like? Man, you know I had a relationship with Mel and them way back. Man, Mel used to come pick me up when Fat was like seven, eight years old. So I knew Fat from way back then. Like back then, he was just a little kid. He would sit there and not say nothing. You know what I'm saying? Like he was just quiet. Like when when I found out he he was he had started rapping and shit, you know it was crazy because I just was like damn man that nigga Fat just used to sit there and not say nothing. You know just be a quiet little kid and not a you know. All new tonight from Baton Rouge, a prosecutor says rapper Little Boozy hired a hitman to kill another man after hearing his life was in danger. When he started going through his legal troubles, bro, what were you? What were you? I was out there, you know, doing my thing, you know what I'm saying? But and how did you see it? What, what was going through your head when you... I, I definitely knew the, the people in BR, they, they had a warrant off for Boosie. You always hear about the police working off with them and, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, bro, we young niggas, we live in the neighborhoods with these judges and lawyers and people who done worked and went to college all their life to get here, but we get here off music, you know what I'm saying? So you 21, 22 years old, living in the house right down the street from them, they don't like that shit, bro. Boosie whole situation was 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 like uh, prime time news, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like everybody was talking about that. You right. know it was reality saying? TV as, 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 exactly, as worse bro. for him, I'm sure, but it's Right, bro. right, right, but shit, you know, to see him, to see him make it out and mm -hmm. make it to the other side, you know what I'm saying? Shit, that, that was a good thing. Yeah. Birdman used to come to Loke House. Birdman and Slim used to come to Loke House, um, mm -hmm. you know, back like back then, you know what I'm saying? Like in the 90s, you know what I'm saying? When they was still independent cash money, you know what I'm saying? Like, so we we had a dude with us from, from New Orleans named Grob Nitty that used to rap with us, right? And uh, apparently this was like a real stepper, you know what I'm saying? And uh, one time, one time, Birdman and Slim came over there, and they saw that nigga Rod Nitty, and they looked like, man, what the fuck this nigga doing over here? You know what I'm saying? Like it was the last nigga they expected to see. You know what I'm saying? They kind of looked like they saw a ghost. We ain't no really know this nigga resume like that out here. You know what I'm saying? Cause he left from out here and came to BR. Anything on pimp? Anything on pimp? pimp. I, I I had a. Uh, a, a chance to really spend some time with him, you know, at his house, you know what I'm saying? So he didn't wake up till like six o'clock in the evening. He had like a little basement and shit, but that's where the studio and shit was at, you know what I'm saying? So we'll just be down there. Uh, Bun, Bun B was there too one day, right? And Bun B was talking about Jagged Edge and 112, but Bun B was like, yeah, man, I'm gonna have to go check out, uh, check out that, you know, Jagged Edge show or whatever, like, man, them niggas be having them hoes, you know? And then the pimp say, nigga, you need to holler at your brother. I be having them hoes. Like, he just, <laughs> he just start going off on, on Bud, like, you know? 